welcome friends to this uh, presentation in this presentation we will be discussing one of the interesting topic and this is a topic of uh, mobile generations mobile device is the most commonly used device nowadays almost everybody living in india will be making an access to the mobile phones the technology that we use today is being evolved over a period of time in this uh, short presentation we will understand how this technology is being evolved and what exactly are the characteristics of this technology and we will also look forward into the future that is the upcoming mobile technology you are observing uh, this presentation on my youtube channel learn with prakash kanar so let us start with the presentation as we know that uh, the mobile phone is a kind of a cellular phone or many times we call it as a cell phone this is because every mobile phone has an access to the cellular network and therefore you will find that this phone is being called as a cell phone we know that a cell is a geographical area where the services are being offered this phone is a mobile phone because it is a portable phone and this phone can be carried from one place to another place and that is the reason this phone is be called as a mobile phone you will find that uh, this phone uh, do not require any physical connection to the network that is no wired connection is required wirelessly this phone is being connected to the cellular network and that is the reason we can easily carry it from one place to another place this cellular network technology is being evolved over a long period of time you can say from last about 40 to 50 years this technology is getting evolved and this long duration of the time is being divided into different categories is being classified into different categories and these categories are called as the generations so basically what we mean by generation so generation you can say is a set of telephone network standards and who provide these standards so there is a union called as international telecommunication union itu in short and this international committee will decide what are the standards of the generation in india you will find that there is an organization called as tra and this organization uh, will be monitoring the telecommunication services within india so that is t r a i where t stands for telecommunication r stands for regularity a stands for authority and i stands for india so as shown in the diagram you will find that the technology is being evolved the first technology that was initially present was being called as a 1g technology so one that stands for the first thing and g stands for generation so this is a first generation technology now the successor of this technology was given the name 2g isn't it so again g stands for the generation and 2 stands for the second so it is a second generation technology in the same way we have 3g and we have 4g and probably the upcoming technology uh, that is being called as a 5g technology so so far we have uh, these five different categories of this telephone network standards called as generations now uh, in this presentation what we are going to do is that we will take some characteristics 
and uh, we will understand how the generation is being overhauled over a period of time and in what way we find the changes in the technology. So the first technology is a 1G technology. The first commercial services of uh, mobile telephony were made available in about 1973. But broadly, we can say that the period of this technology is from 1980 to 1990. So you will find that these generations are broadly divided into a category of 10 years. So first generation category period is from 1980 to 1990. The frequency that was used in the first generation technology was comparatively less uh, frequency. You will find that a frequency from about 150 megahertz to about 900 megahertz was used. So this frequency was permitted because the bandwidth requirement in the 1G technology was much less. The technology that is being used in the 1G is an analog cellular technology. So in the initial phase, we do not have digital technology. So mobile communication technology starts with the analog. Now we know that there are two types of signal in electronics. One signal is called as analog, which is a continuous signal. And the another signal is called as digital which is a discrete signal. You will find that most of the physical entities that are present are analogous, that is they are continuous. But uh, most of the modern day systems are digital systems. Your computer is a digital. Nowadays mobiles are also digital. And therefore it is mandatory for us to convert such analogous signals into digital form. So such conversion is also possible. Uh, but initially, when the 1G technology gets started, it was an analog cellular technology. The bandwidth requirement for this technology was much less, isn't it? It was about only 30 kilohertz. We know that our radio receiver has a bandwidth of about 10 kilohertz. Our AM radio receiver has a bandwidth of about 10 kilohertz. Your FM radio receiver has a bandwidth of about 15 kilohertz. And in this technology, since only voice services were offered, the bandwidth requirement was much less and it was about 30 kilohertz. This bandwidth requirement will put the restrictions on the number of channels. Now, this is a technology where you can say it's a first kind of wireless communication technology because earlier to this, we do not have any wireless communication. So, the first generation mobile phones were the first wireless communication technology. The capacity or speed of the network was much less. And you will find that the speed of the network was only up to two kilobits per second. So this is a very low speed. And because of this low speed, you will find that in the 1G mobile phone, the internet access was not possible. So mostly this service was used for voice communication. But this technology has many limitations, such as the voice quality that, is, that was being offered on the mobile phones was a bad quality. Also the battery uh, do not have much life. Frequent charging was required. And also you will find that the size of this mobile phone was much larger. When you compare this size to the existing phones, you will find that this size of the mobile phone was much larger than what is today. This technology was initially developed in European countries and also in America. In European countries, you will find that the NMT systems, that is Nordic mobile telephonic systems, were popular. In America, AMPS systems, such as advanced mobile phone system, was popular. In India, uh, it was not popular because common people have never used this 1G technology. It may be used only to some extent uh, uh, by the people. Uh, maybe commercial people or government people might have been used it, isn't it? But it was not publicly available and the first generation technology was not publicly available in India. So it was not popular at all. Actually, the people of India started using mobile phone only from the second generation. 
So now let us go to the second generation. You will find that roughly we can say that the period from 1991 to 2000 can be classified as a second generation period. The frequency was enhanced. The frequency from about 900 megahertz to 1.8 gigahertz was permitted to use in this technology. This technology is the first of its kind digital technology. So this is a digital cellular technology. And this technology is also called as GSM technology, where GSM stands for the global service for mobile. So this technology was very popular and people started using it. Now, since the requirement was increased, you will find that the bandwidth requirement uh, for the 2G generation mobile phone was also enhanced and a bandwidth of about 25 megahertz was required for the operation of such mobile phones. So the characteristics of this technology was that it was first of its kind digital communication technology. Earlier to this, we used to have only the analog technology, but this was the digital technology. You will find that the speed of the network was enhanced about 30 times. The speed of the 2G mobile phone was higher than that of the 1G phones. And the speed that can be achieved in the 2G systems was about 64 kilobits per second. This technology, uh, even though the speed is enhanced, you will find that the people mostly prefer to use this technology only for voice communication. There was also a battery issue. And you will find that in India, people started using these phones uh, because the Nokia phones becomes very popular in India in those days. And people started using this second generation technology. So there was a, a lot of improvement when you compare this technology to the first generation technology. You will find that the SMS, the short message service was started in this uh, period. Also, the GPRS system, that is general packet radio service system was also started in this period. And because of this GPRS, you will find that it was possible to make an internet access on the mobile phones. So various examples can be given DCS systems, such as digital cellular systems or digital AMPS systems are the examples of 2G phones. In India, various companies such as BSNL uh, set up the network for 2G and you will find that these, uh, this network was offered and the devices such as Nokia phones were used to make an access to this second generation technology. Still, many people in India, you will find that they are making the use of 2G technology. Uh, but still there were a lot of limitations in the 2G technology and therefore these limitations were recovered in another generation and that is being called as a third generation or 3G technology. Broadly, you can say that the period from the year 2001 to 2010 can be called as a third generation technology period. The frequencies were enhanced again and you will find that the frequencies up to 2 gigahertz were permitted to make use in this technology. Uh, there was a lot of change uh, in the technology in 3G. The technology such as CDMA, UMTS and AGE was used in the 3G where CDMA stands for Code Division Multiple Access, UMTS it stands for Universal Mobile Telecommunication System and AGE is being called as an enhanced data rate for global evolution. So you can say that in short, age is an advanced version of the GPRS. And remember in mobile communication, whenever the same frequency spectrum is to be accessed by the many people, then there should be some methodology. And this methodology is being called as a multiple access methodology. Normally there are three types of multiple access methodology such as time division multiple access, frequency division multiple access, and the third one is the code division multiple access. In the earlier two generations, you will find that the people used to prefer 
uh, frequency division multiple access and time division multiple access. In the 3G technology, first time it was possible to make use of CDMA, that is code division multiple access. But code division multiple access, even though it is comparatively superior, but it has many other limitations. And because of these limitations, you will find that it was not possible to carry this CDMA technology further. And the time division multiple access becomes more popular even now. The bandwidth requirement was enhanced in the 3G and it was about 100 megahertz. That is the bandwidth per channel required to offer services was about 100 megahertz. You will find that the special characteristics of this 3G technology was the offer of the digital broadband. Now broadband, you can say that it is a faster internet communication. In the earlier 1G and 2G technology, only dial-up networking was available. That is, you need to dial a number in order to make an access to the internet. But broadband is a, something more devoted and so that you can have a higher speed internet access by using the digital broadband. The speed of the network was enhanced and uh, you will find that uh, the some 3G networks can offer you the speed up to 2 megabits per second. So many times it was increased when you compare it to the earlier generation of the technology. But even though uh, there were certain limitations, you will find that in 3G uh, there was a limitation that the phone that offer 3G communication were expensive phones. Also, there was an issue of battery. That is frequently the charging of the battery was required. But there were a lot of improvements in the mobile phones. You will find that the concept of smartphones was introduced in 3G only. Uh, most of the company services were made available in the form of apps. So on the screen of the mobile phone, you will get an app. And once you click an app, then the corresponding service will be offered to the user. So you will find that the internet access with higher speed was also possible only in 3G. Uh, various uh, tele telecommunication networks uh, uh, examples can be given where you will find that the examples such as BSNL or Jio or Airtel, they set up the 3G networks in India. And you will find that uh, such networks can be easily accessed by using the Android phones or by using Apple iPhones. So 3G technology is still very popular and many people in India are still using this technology. So this is not an outdated technology. Currently it is being used by billions of people. Now uh, we have certain limitations in 3G and these limitations in the 3G are being overcome in the upcoming technology and that technology is being called as a fourth generation technology. So roughly we can say that presently we are in the fourth generation technology. The period of this technology is being set from 2011 to 2020. The frequency is being enhanced and you will find that the frequency up to 8 gigahertz is being permitted by the ITU. The technology that is being evolved is called as a long-term evolution technology or LTE technology. So most of the mobile phones are using LTE technology. A Wi-Fi technology was also introduced, wireless fidelity. And you will find that the technology such as voice over LTE was also introduced in the fourth generation. So this voice over LTE is something like the HD quality in the voice communication. The bandwidth requirement was not increased. It was kept up to only 100 megahertz. So we can say that uh, this is an all IP technology. That is the voice communication was achieved by using the internet protocol. IP stands for internet protocol. So this is a high speed service. And you can say that this service is being available anytime, anywhere. So these are the special characteristics of 
4G technology. The speed of the network was enhanced. And you will find that a good 4G network can offer you up to a speed up to one gigabits per second. Practically, it may not be possible for you to get this much high speed, but certain good networks can offer you the speed up to one gigabit per second. Uh, but there are certain limitations of this technology as well, isn't it? You will find that uh, these phones, the 4G phones are expensive phones. So common man cannot make an access to these phones. Also, there are certain security issues, isn't it, in relation with the phones. So these issues need to be addressed in the upcoming generations. But there were a lot of improvement as far as the mobile phones are concerned. You will find that the mobile multimedia was achievable only in 4G. The video conferencing, online classes can be conducted by using the 4G technology. Specialized customized services can be uh, possible only in 4G technology. You can observe your television, isn't it? Not only on tele your television set, but also on mobile. So mobile TV, actually mobile, the concept of mobile TV was introduced only in 3G. But practically, we find that the mobile TV uh, is achievable only in the 4G generation. Again, in India, you will find that various communication networks were set up by BSNL, Geo, Airtel, Vodafone, and many other companies. And such 4G networks can be easily accessed by using the Google Android phones or by using the Apple iPhones. So 4G technology is being currently used by the people in India. But you will find that maybe in very near future, in a span of one year or in a span of two years, will be entering into another generation. So let us understand what is the coming generation and what it has offered to you. So roughly, we can say that uh, this is a 5G technology. So 5U is the 5G technology is the next upcoming technology. And roughly, we can say that this technology uh, will get commenced from 2021. Already it has been started in some countries, but it will commence in general from 2021 and it will last up to 2030. It is being said that the frequencies up to 300 gigahertz are being permitted to use by the companies. So frequency range is being increased. You will find that when the frequencies are increased, then the complexity of the telecommunication network becomes more. The technology that is being used is called as an advanced LT. So this is an advanced version of LT. Or many times this technology is being termed as WWWW technology. That is wireless WWW technology, where these three WWW stands for World Wide Web. So this is wireless worldwide web technology. The bandwidth requirement remains almost same. There is no change in the bandwidth requirement. So from the last two generations, you will be observing that the bandwidth requirement per channel is almost same to that of 100 megahertz. So what can be the spatial characteristics of this 5G technology? You will find that in 5G technology, a concept of mobile broadband will be introduced. That is, your mobile phone itself becomes a, become, will offer you a broadband service, a more dedicated service for the internet access. You will find that a new technology called as Internet of Things, IoT, and this technology will be based on the 5G technology, where uh, you will find that almost all devices can get connected to the internet. At present, you will find that only certain devices such as your mobile phone, your computer, your laptop, or your tablet PC can have an access to the internet. But now it is possible that many other devices such as your car, your home, or even your table, chair can also make an access to the internet. That is, it is possible in IoT 
that everything will become a smart thing so as shown in this uh, image isn't it you will find that every house will hold some connectivity and all the houses will be connected to each other your car will also have some kind of connectivity and so that all the cars on the road will be connected to each other the data rate that can be achieved in this 5g technology is much higher and you will find that the speed up to 100 gigabits per second can be achieved in the fifth generation so very this network will be very high speed network but of course uh, there are certain issues or there are certain limitations of this technology that the phones that offer 5g connectivity will be very expensive phones so far in india uh, we have seen only one or two launches of the 5g phones and you will find that the cost of these phones is much higher than that of other phones and people are also worried about the security issues because in iot when everything is connected say for example your fridge uh, of your home is being connected on the internet your home itself is connected your lighting is connected so when everything is connected on the internet people are worried that uh, uh, there may be various security issues associated with this connectivity so there will be a lot of improvement when we compare this technology to the earlier technology you will find that this technology will offer you interactive multimedia virtual systems virtual classrooms virtual college virtual university all this is possible by using 5g your house will become a smart house your car will become a smart car your every electronic device or even non electronic device even if your wearables can become also a smart one so far you will find that certain companies such as at&t in america or in china china mobile has already set up some prototype 5g system networks and in india it is also possible that in coming future isn't it we will have this technology available for the use so friends uh, this was a a uh, brief demonstration of how the mobile phone was evolved over a period of time uh, i hope that you must have been uh, got an understanding how this technology was being developed over a period of time you will find that uh, uh, the coming generation is a mobile technology generation and practically almost every person will be making use of this technology so people are expecting lot many changes in the coming days if you have any comment about this presentation then you can always share your comment or if you want to suggest any improvement then always you can suggest the improvement thank you for uh, viewing this presentation on my youtube channel